They ignore the law. But even if it were a civil debt, they can't take your money off of you unless you've been found guilty in a court of law. So what they should do is they should summon you to attend your local civil court and you should argue the case in that court. When you actually go through that little light and it go bash bash and you think rude words to yourself <laughs> and a few days later you get a billy do saying were you the driver of this car and you say well yeah okay I was and then they send you another billy do and they say you've been given a 60 pound fine and three points on your license or you can go to court and contest it but if you go to court, you will get six points on your license and up to a thousand pound fine. Anybody had them? Yeah? Says that, doesn't it? Yeah. But that little bit which says if you contest it, if you've got the audacity to, to actually contest it in court, then in point of fact, we are, going to, we are threatening you that if you've got the audacity to do that, we're going to double the points on your license and we're going to charge you up to a thousand pounds in a fine. Now, every dictionary I've ever come across would say that was a threat. Yeah? Every dictionary I've ever come across would say that was a threat. And English law is supposed to operate on the normal, everyday meaning of the word. Well, if you are threatened with a punishment before you've been found guilty in a court of law, according to the Bill of Rights of 1689, it is voided. <coughs> yeah? It's voided. So basically, Parliament are ignoring the constitutional law of this country. And then you see they come along and they say, well, we've been robbing you blind but we're allowed to do that because the Bill of Rights actually says we can rob you blind. Because what we do in Parliament, we can't be prosecuted for. Don't let your 14-year-old daughter go to Parliament on her own. But we found a sensible judge. Because they took that to a high court judge and the judge was quite sensible and he said to them, there is no moral or legal basis in your argument. Go to trial. But then are members of parliament, aren't they? So they're going to appeal this all the way. Because they're members of parliament, they're getting legal aid all the way. You get prosecuted by your local council because they think that you haven't paid them your taxes and your rates. And what are they going to do? You go along, you see a solicitor say, I might claim legal aid. Oh, what? No, can't claim legal aid. You can't get it. The members of parliament who are on 60 odd grand a year, basic pay, plus all the stuff they're stealing off us, they can get it. So they're going to appeal that all the way up to the European Court of Human Rights, which is a premenia and high treason. I say, let's bring back premenia and let them do it, and then we can hang them all. <laughs> Much better system. Forgive me for asking this, but I thought we had a legal fiction, which is the name in capitals, which in the ah, commercial you, you, world... You, you, you've been watching the John Harris, haven't you? A free man on the land. And the legal fiction is a debtor, and a no. debtor never wins. No. We've got all this stuff that's spouting about all over the internet, um, David Icke and co are pushing this stuff out about free man on the land and it's being used um, in order that people can avoid paying their rates and if you if you stop by a policeman you say to him I'm not prepared to tell you my name because I don't want to enter into a contract with you yeah I get a lot of people phoning me up and sending me emails saying help what can I do I was stopped by a policeman he asked me for my name, I told him I wasn't prepared when we were in a contract with him. He stopped laughing and then he arrested me for obstructing an officer in the execution of his duty. What can I do? And I say to them, oh, go and find the policeman that stopped you and who arrested you and apologise profusely for wasting his time. 
Because frankly, if he's anything like me as a policeman, I'd stop you because you turned left where you shouldn't. And I'd stop you and I'd have a little chat with you and I might ask your name and I'd do a vehicle check to make sure it's your car and you're entitled to drive it. And I'd check your documents. I'd give you a producer. All of which I'm allowed to do by law. And then I'd say to you, right, well, the signs are put there to keep people alive. Obey them. On this occasion, I'm not going to give you a fixed penalty ticket. I'm not going to summon you. Right? And they, we get all of that. And then we get people saying, well, I'm a free man on the land, so I don't actually have to pay my rates because, because, because. Being a free man in England means one thing and one thing only. You have the right to go where you like, when you like, how you like, to say what you like, when you like, how you like, and to do what you like, when you like, how you like, with the one proviso that it should not impact adversely on anybody else. Because if it does, that's a crime. Okay? Under God's law or Alfred's law, it's a crime. You think to yourself, there's that nice bit of tarmac road there laying outside of my house and all the tar is dead wet. But I'm going to go and walk all over it. And the man shouts and screams at you because you've just wrecked his nice flat piece of tar. That's criminal damage. It's a crime. You don't have the right to walk on his wet tar because it's criminal damage. But it does not entitle you not to pay your taxes and your rates. There was a lady, a very great lady, called Elizabeth. And Elizabeth paid her taxes but she kept back the part that was going from her local council to the regional authority. When the, regional authority, when the local council wrote to her and said, well, you've, you've, you've not paid us enough tax, she said, oh, no, I know that. But I don't have a right to elect anybody to the regional authority. I can't question the regional authority. I don't know who they are or how they're appointed or anything else. They have no say in it at all. And as there's no taxation without representation, I don't have to pay you that money. And the council came back and they said, oh yes you do, and they sued her. Now her father had been a high court judge in India, but he worked for the British and he was in, in, using British law, but he'd been a high court judge in India. And she got all these law books, it's all English law. And she went to court, as a little old lady, and she trashed the council's lawyers. And the court agreed that she was right. So then they came back and they did it again. And they sued her again. And she went back and she trashed them again. And she went on trashing them until such time as she developed leukaemia and died. So if you're not going to pay your taxes, you have to have an arguable case, i.e., I haven't seen a policeman in my road for 18 months, and we've had 10 burglaries, 5 cars stolen, and every car in the streets had its mirrors ripped off. I am not paying the percentage of my council tax which goes to the police. You can argue that in court, can't you? You're paying for a service, you're not getting the service. Therefore, why would you want to pay for it if you're not getting it? But if you want that service, I'll tell you how to get it. You get yourself a residence association, and you invite your local chief superintendent along to a meeting of your residence association, so he can tell you about the policing of the area. He will undoubtedly bring along the local area inspector, who will undoubtedly bring along the local home beat officer. And then you give the chief superintendent help. And you make it perfectly plain to him that if no policemen appear in your street to investigate crime in your street, it is his job that you are going for.